No, it's Sorry. the book Clockers, so yeah. it's more like now. it's got more of those urban elements, yeah. you know. Did you have a favorite quiz show as a kid? Did you ever watch them? I watched them like with the Hollywood Squares. Of, you know, I was never really. A, I'm not a big game, uh, crossword puzzle uh, type of person. You know? No, I'm not either. But I always liked things like Truth or Consequences. Truth or Consequences. That was kind of a quasi game okay. show. I think I would have liked the sixty-four thousand dollar question. Whenever yeah. I saw like clips of it, it interested me because it seemed like it was very dramatic and. Maybe there was a topic that I would have been interested in. It was such a simple time. I was young, but I remember one of the first TV shows I ever saw in person was I've Got a Secret with Gary Moore mm -hmm. and uh, What's My Line, those kind of things. Right. They were a big deal. Right. You know, people now, we don't have any idea that how popular those Those were prime time things, right? television shows, shows, and people just can't have no idea. Well, they, people always, they don't understand how something began. That mm -hmm. was the beginning of it, and people used to all get together. Whoever had a TV, you know, mm -hmm. my mom was able to describe it very uh, clearly and vividly uh, to me and so I could imagine you know what it would be like I mean uh, in that day and time people don't forget people can forget that there weren't air, air conditioners everywhere not everybody had a television set right and right. it was a whole different time and that's if right. something was weird on television people from the neighborhood or wherever would gather around to watch the box that's and right. it was black and white that's right and, you know yeah. I mean it's hard for people to imagine, you know, like I have a son who's four, he thinks there was always VCRs. Yeah. And I said, no, you know, we had to wait a year for a movie if we liked it. He had to wait for it to come on, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then suffer through all the commercials and, mm -hmm. yeah. Did you meet the, the guy you played? Yeah, well, many times. Many times I watched him on film, you know, hundreds and hundreds of times. Uh, so, uh, and the other fellas too. But, uh, yeah, Herb, I, I met him. A bunch of times. So when you meet real people, have you ever played a real person before? Yeah, I have. Yeah. I was wondering, do you try to become that person or you just try to get a feel for who he is and do you well, watch mannerisms or what is it you try? Yeah, to well, Herb, basically, I mean, I did a lot of things that were close. I mean, the way he talked, he's a very high voice, you know, in the movie. Uh, I have a much more husky, uh, deeper voice than his. You know, Herb's voice is very high. You know, and you know, I had to really warm up every day to get at that. And, I had to listen to it over and over, and I would listen to it every day, you know, and it's that he was heavier than his hair, you know, we, we had a really, the woman who did the hair in the film was terrific, really, really, uh, so, uh, you know, all those things, sometimes when people are a little overweight, they're a little removed from their body, so they use their head more than their body. But when know? you're doing a part, like when you have a f different voice other than yours, you really are aware that you're acting, aren't you? Well, you have to do it so much that it becomes second nature, you know, you, 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 as you, undo, you know, I watch it over and over again, I could talk all day like it, you know, I could just, I could say anything like it, and then, then especially you work on the, the words that you're going to be saying, but there were times I actually improvised in the movie, some of those phone calls, those were all improvised uh, phone calls that I had, but I knew things from all the conversations that I had with Herb, and I'd heard him say, on my own tape, and I put those into the phone, phone conversations. But, you know, acting is a creative thing that can be, is a combination of using your own feelings, you know, in a form that's crafted, you know, mm -hmm. uh, with skill. Skill alone is, can be hollow, and just feeling alone can just be unformed and repetitive, you know. Sometimes you see someone in a play and they're like, or in a movie, they're so connected and it's fantastic, but they don't know how to vary it and, you know, because people can only take so much of one thing. And that's, that's what you learn, you know, instinctively as an actor. Sometimes you don't even have to map it out anymore, you know, to try to, mm -hmm. you know, to get as, as much variation as you what can. What made you want to go do this movie? Well, if you're an actor, you want to work. <laughs> that's, Period. That's yeah, the first I know, thing. That's true. It was a very good script. Robert Redford asked me to be in the movie. I was one of the first people. I was like the first person aboard. Uh, and it was shooting in New York, where I like to work. And it was a great opportunity. I, you know, he, we talked about playing a couple different characters. And you know, I, I thought maybe he wouldn't cast me as Herb because he's supposed to be heavy. And maybe, and he had the imagination to do that. And uh, so I really. Since he asked me to be in it, I really, you know, and I liked the script, I, I wanted to, uh, to surprise him as much as I could because he had confidence in me and faith in me in doing it. So, and I, and the movie actually, I think, 
even turned out better than I thought it would be. You know, when you watch the end of the movie and they're kind of wrapping everything up for you, you realize that the quiz show scandal was the end of the innocence, really, for yeah. a lot of America. And you just don't think about it being that important. But when you look back into everything, you say, wow, it's the first time TV or the government type thing right. deceived us. That's right. And But, you know, we, we deal with these things. I've mentioned this in a couple of the other interviews, like the O.J. Simpson's thing. It's not, okay, we've lost it. We're past Watergate and all those things. But people are still, like, you know, fascinated with people that they sort of create as heroes, mm -hmm. or the media does, or makes, or who has the right face, you know, and profile or whatever, and has a certain amount of accomplishments to, to, to fill the bill as sort of a false god. Uh, and so I don't think with that as removed as we think we are, because the media sort of does that for us now in, cer in certain ways. We just, you know, because people are let down all the time. Uh, but that was the first time. It was a big event. I mean, the, I, I was only born. I was born at that time. I remember, you know, the assassination of President Kennedy mm -hmm. as being, you know, the shocking yeah. thing. And all. Uh, so, but and my then mother. Then Watergate, no, yeah, on, 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 on after that. But those, these are big events that, you know, and also being sold the bill of goods. Yeah. And I think we are constantly being sold that, you know, and uh, and. Television just has that immediate access into people's brains. Did this uh, scandal change Herb's life, the real life? Oh Herb? yes, it affected. In him. what I way? Mean, now, well, you know, when he's it was a bus all driver over, or something now, no, right? He's or not. Transit guy. No, he was a transit worker. He was. He works for the transit department. He was a school teacher. He wanted to be a professor. It affected him in many ways. I mean, uh, he he's actually a professional witness for the city of New York. So in other words, when there's an accident and like a, a stop sign is down or lights not where he goes there and records and he testifies in cases against the city uh, you know what was what was working what was not or whatever but uh, her basically felt even when it was all over he was always looked upon as the person who informed not who told the truth he was the bad guy yeah you, you know people would say you're the guy who told about you know Van Doren and basically he he told the truth in reality right from the beginning I mean, everyone, knew. he told everybody. He was the kind of guy who was really smart, but he was naive that way. He was not a, you know, a manipulator in any way. So that's why a lot of his anger came out of being really sort of taken for, you know, and used in a way. Yeah. Nice to meet you, John. Nice to meet Enjoy you. Enjoy your work. Thank okay, you. thanks very much.